The way that we work with ladders is a little bit different. I made this YouTube video a while back that uh, explains the torque process with uh, with the ladder situation. And so feel free to, you know, uh, go to this link. Um, you're just going to have to you know, copy and paste, uh, you know, write it down, and then um, you can go there. And, it, and uh, it's a good summary of um, what we'll be talking about here. All right, so one of the things that we need to establish as we get started here is what's going on with the lever arm and if we have it at an angle. So go ahead and draw, uh, we'll write out a long lever arm and a short force. That's the first example we're going to look at. So let's say we have a door and we're applying a force on the door at an angle like this. And we already know that, you know, we can't get the full amount of torque um, you know, as compared to, let's say we push right at a 90 degree angle. So what we have to do is we have to break it in the X and Y components. The only component of force that will cause torque is the uh, side over here. And so um, this is the only portion that we can use is, uh, is this portion. And so a short force, long lever arm, let's say that, um, you know, uh, however long it is, you know, we're applying that force at uh, an angle, we can only count what that portion of the force is. Now, this is the same as a short lever arm and a large force. So go ahead and uh, write that statement, and then let's go ahead and draw this out. So that's like if we had this four, let's say this is this whole arm or this whole uh, door is four meters long. Um, what we can do instead of using the, uh, you know, breaking up and figuring out what the force, you know, part is here, we can say, okay, let's use the original amount of force, but use a shorter length. And in this case here, if this is four meters long and this is four meters long, you can see, you know, from here to here, um, we can only, our effective length is only 3.5 meters. And so this is called the effective lever arm length. Same situation, but we, we're going to use all of that force and only use 3.5 meters worth because um, that force is only acting over, you know, uh, that smaller lever arm. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, apply values to this. Let's say the original force was 10. And we had to break this down, and the force over here is 8.75 newtons. So for the top torque, um, it's you know force times displacement times sine theta. We have four meters. We have 8.75 newtons, and we get a torque of um, positive 35 newton meters. Now down here at the bottom, um, we're going to use the full 10 meters. However, I mean 10 newtons. However, we can't use that full arm length. We can only use this portion of the lever arm, which is the X component. We can only use this X component, which is 3.5 meters long. And so therefore, when we calculate the torque, force, which is 10 times the lever arm, 3.5, um, we multiply those two, we get the same amount of torque. So again, a long, we have a long lever arm here, shorter force is the same as having a shorter lever arm and a large force. Um, and again, this is the same situation. Um, it's just that here we broke up the force. Down here we use the same force, but a shorter lever arm. So this is just a different way to do it, and this is what we're actually going to need uh, today. So let's go ahead and um, and work through that with the uh, with the ladder here. So we can draw a ladder that's sitting up against a wall, and the ladder here you can you know imagine all the different forces that we have you know we have the ladder itself so we have the force of gravity the ladder itself which we can draw and we know that the wall is pushing back what we're going to assume in these problems is there's no friction on the wall it's just pushing back against the ladder like that and then something's happening down here right so if there were no friction this ladder would just slip out and start going this way right so we know that there's actually some friction force holding it back here. And then we also know that, you know, there's got to be an upward force counteracting the force of gravity. So that's an upward force here as well. So when we set up these forces, we got the wall force, force of gravity, the normal force, and the force of friction. And that's just, you know, the forces that we have with the, the basic ladder here. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at 
what's going on, the force and the axe, the Y, and the torch. So, you know, for, uh, and, and our goal in the end is to figure out what is the, the wall force here. And then also, what is the reaction force at the bottom? So in other words, the combination of the normal force and the force of friction. So let's say the mass of the ladder is 120 kilograms and the angle that it makes is 50 degrees and the length of the ladder is five meters. So uh, the forces in the X are pretty straightforward. We have the positive force of friction and then the wall force going in the negative. So positive X, right, negative X. Both of those should be balanced. Those are the only two X forces that we have. In the Y, we have the normal force and the force of gravity. Those are the only two in the Y. Now, in the, uh, for the torque, this is where you know we're going to take a look at what's happening in terms of breaking down the lever arm for what we need. And this is the one that takes a little bit more practice. So if we think about it, we know that the force of gravity is acting on the ladder, right? What we can do is this ladder is the lever arm. We'll say that the rotation point is right here down at the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, here is the lever arm of the ladder in the X. We're going to break the lever arm up into the X. And so the force of gravity is acting among the, you know, on the lever. Um, and the effective length is only this portion right here to right here only this portion. Um, so the force of gravity is acting on that, uh, on the ladder. And so this is what we need in terms of our lever arm to see how much torque that we have. And if this is the rotation point right here, uh, the force of gravity on the ladder is going to cause a, uh, a clockwise torque. So when we do that, we'll have the negative torque of the force of gravity of the ladder and that'll be the first one that we look at. And so uh, when we take a look at the uh, trig here, right, we have the, you know, the whole lever arm is 50 degrees or five, five meters. It's at 50 degrees. So the adjacent side here, right, this, this side, this part of the lever arm that is, uh, you know, perpendicular to the force of gravity is this long. So if the, you know, the, we know the force of gravity is acting halfway up the ladder, so, in other words, the, um, you know, the lever arm here is going to be acting about the, you know, about 1.607 will be the effective length. So, when we place this in here for torque, you know, we have the negative torque from the ladder, uh, force of gravity of the ladder. And uh, what we're going to have here, we'll have the negative force of gravity times 1.607 because that is the effective length right there for the force of gravity. Now, the other side that we have, um, you know, if again, this is our rotation point or hinge point down here at the bottom, rotation point, hinge point, the same. Um, we know that this wall force is acting on the ladder as well right here. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what is this right here this portion of the ladder, this, this um, you know, uh, effective lever arm length, because we're going to use the entire wall force, right? So we need what this length is to break down this overall lever, lever arm to get, you know, the lever arm in the Y direction. So when we find that side, that's uh, 3.832 or 302. And we know that the, we already talked about how the force of gravity is causing, you know, clockwise rotation and we need to figure out um, the you know what kind of rotation the wall is going to cause so so the wall is going to cause the um, counterclockwise torque you know going around uh, this direction right on the on the lever so the hinge point you know being here this is the ladder the wall is going to cause this kind of torque the force gravity is this kind of torque so when we set up the wall um, counterclockwise torque times the lever arm, effective lever arm length. And again, the reason that we're, we're using the full amount of force here is because when we're applying the trig, you know, the sine theta, we're, we're applying that trig to the lever arm itself, not the force. And so that's why we use, you know, we're using, you know, with the wall here, the effective lever arm length, which is this right here, times the full wall force. And then you know, the effective lever arm length here with the force of gravity.
And so we've got the, you know, the wall force, the force of gravity times the um, effective lever arm length there. And we end up getting a wall force of 493.403. Once we know the wall force, um, we know that, um, you know, in the y direction, um, well, we already have that, right? So the normal force is equal to force of gravity. So that's the normal force there. And then we know that the force of friction is completely counteracting the wall force. So, you know, those are equal and opposite. So now that we know what the force of friction is to counteract the wall force, and now I know that what the normal force is, we can set up, you know, triangle uh, 493 to the right there, you know, force of friction. Then we have the normal force, and uh, we can use Pythagorean theorem to get the uh, hypotenuse 1,275.313 newtons at 67.24 degrees above the x-axis. And when we draw that, it's going to be the you know combination of the force of friction and normal force uh, pointing upwards there. Now, if we wanted to find the coefficient of friction for the ladder, we can do that because we know the normal force, which is right here, and we know how much friction we have. So the force of friction is less than or equal to the coefficient times the normal force. And we can place uh, that in there. So we end up getting a coefficient of uh, 0.04196 as our coefficient of static friction.